unmitigated, unprecedented chaos unfolding in Iowa as we speak. So this started a couple days ago when on Saturday night, the Des Moines Register was supposed to release this poll for the Democratic primary about the upcoming caucuses that were happening today on Monday. And this poll is historically accurate in predicting who's going to win the Iowa caucus. And almost always, the person who will go on and win the Iowa caucus will go on to win the, the Democratic nomination. So if you've been listening to the show for the last year, you know that I'm not one of those people who over focus and base their entire analysis on the polls. I believe there are way better metrics to judge how a candidate is going to perform in an election. Um, metrics like your crowd size, um, how many individual donors you have. If you're only raising money from individual donors, how much money you, you have in the bank, the amount of volunteers you have, and of course, policies. Those are all better indicators to judge how a candidate is going to perform in an election. And those are the things that I usually focus on on the show. To me, polls are the one of the last things you should look at when you're trying to make that determination about a candidate. But this Des Moines Register poll is slightly different because, like I mentioned earlier, it's historically accurate in predicting who's going to win the primary, not the, the caucuses in Iowa and later the nomination. But more than that, the person who's leading in that Des Moines Register poll usually gets a, a boost going into the caucuses because the press covers that endlessly. So you get a bunch of free media from it. And more than that, there are undecided caucus goers in Iowa who look at that poll and base their final determination of who they're going to caucus for based on that poll. Now, I don't agree with that type of thinking, but that is true. A lot of voters in Iowa, undecided voters in Iowa, make their decision based on that poll. And coincidentally, we might not, it might not be as big as a coincidence as I'm later going to get to. Bernie Sanders was, he was very much expected to be leading in that last Des Moines Register poll. One, because he's been surging in all of the polls of, of Iowa for the last couple of weeks. But he's also, but also the Des Moines Register did a poll. I believe it was, it wasn't, this This one wasn't their historic poll. This was just a regular Iowa caucus poll. And I believe it was about a couple of weeks ago. And Bernie Sanders was up in that poll. So all indications were Bernie Sanders was going to be leading in that, in the historic Des Moines Register poll that was supposed to come out on Saturday. And that would have given him an even bigger boost to accompany his unprecedented ground game and grassroots organization that he has in Iowa and the energy that you can see on the ground for his campaign, especially when you look at his campaign events in Iowa. So the poll doesn't come out. And we later learn that is the, the reason why the Domain Register and CNN didn't publish the poll. The results of the poll was because some random person called Pete Buttigieg campaign and complained to them and said when they were caught when they were when they spoke to the pollster, they didn't mention Pete Buttigieg's name in the list of candidates who they could choose to support from. Then Pete Buttigieg's campaign uses that as an excuse to say the entire poll will be inaccurate. So then his campaign calls up CNN and the Des Moines Register, complains to them about this. Apparently, they did some internal review and they found something about one of the pollsters they the font size was was slightly off so Pete Buttigieg's name was put on the next page and apparently he missed it now as a Sanders supporter and somebody who follows politics closely and knows what happened in 2016 I was skeptical of this from the jump I didn't believe it Multiple times, CNN has been caught red-handed with a clear disdain and open bias against Bernie Sanders. And more than that, it's not just something that they have internally. They've actively worked to undermine him so that he would lose the primary. They did that in 2016 when they leaked multiple times. Donna Brazil and arguably other people at CNN leaked debate questions to Hillary Clinton before she had primary debates with Bernie Sanders. And not to mention the other the bullshit that they were pulling with the super delegates and all that stuff. So it is perfectly in the realm of, of, of reason and logic to believe that CNN would 
just refused to release this poll because they feel that it would give a boost to Sanders and would hurt the other establishment candidates in the race. Perfectly logical. But I was like, okay, forget it. Bernie's already... Looks like he's about to clean house in Iowa anyway. So, you know what? Fuck the Des Moines Register. Who cares about the poll? The the caucuses are coming up on Monday. And Bernie's really going to show out. So, I didn't even really make a big deal of out of it. Even though that shit stunk to high heaven. Here we are Monday. Iowa caucuses. The entire country is waiting for the results to come in. Hours and hours after they were supposed to. And... Then CNN comes out and says that the Iowa Democratic Party isn't releasing the the results of the caucuses because they were, quote, doing quality control of, of the results to make sure that everything was accurate. So even more time goes by, still no results, still no official results. Mind you, during the entire time the caucuses was going on throughout the day, there were people who were present at the location, tweeting and and, um, reporting to independent journalists about what was happening. And there were video, especially once the the official caucuses started at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and CNN and all these other networks, they were actually, they had cameras at these caucus sites. And we we got to see on camera who was showing out and how many people were there to support each candidate. So we really got a, a, a understanding of what was going on in Iowa without the official results yet. So we see what was going on throughout the night. It looks like Bernie Sanders is going to run away with the thing. Joe Biden is getting his ass trounced and putting out an embarrassing showing like I predicted he would. But again, it's late in the night. There's still no results. Literally 0% of the precincts re, uh, re, were, report, were, were reporting results. Then, as it gets later on in the night, other candidates are just like, fuck it. Let's just do victory speeches and just whatever the results are, we'll just say it's a wash. We already did our victory speech and we don't have to take the L on the chin and come out and give a, a, a somber embarrassing concession speech in Iowa. So Amy Klobuchar comes out and Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden gives his meandering speech. But, and then of course, Bernie Sanders. And then we get the announcement that the results won't be coming out at all tonight. Then shortly after that, Pete Buttigieg gets, comes out and he gives his speech and he comes out and he just outright declares victory says he won other other people were were trying to just beat around the bush and and not just admit that they lost badly in iowa but pete Buttigieg comes out and says he won and of course since there's no official results nobody's going to contest that and he gives this lying ass speech and everybody's looking at him well political twitter's looking at him like what are you doing then after that cnn confirms what we all were suspecting this entire time which was there was a problem with that this new app that they just developed to, for the reporting of the Iowa caucuses. And this app was apparently, they were supposed to report all the all the different precincts, over 1,600 precincts in Iowa were supposed to report their results through this app and it was going to go to the Iowa Democratic Party. And from there, they would uh, uh, send the results out to the different uh, media outlets. And of course, it would become public. That's the way it was supposed to go. But there was problems with the app from the beginning of the day. People were on Twitter, people who were caucus chairs and and, and um, precinct captains were reporting on Twitter and reporting to independent journalists that the app wasn't working and it was crashing and they couldn't use it. So we find out that that is what the holdup is. Short, shortly after they admit that it's the, the, the app that's the problem, we get this bombshell that the people who finance this app, not only are they big donors to Pete Buttigieg, but Pete Buttigieg's campaign itself financed this, uh, put put up $21,000 to finance this the app that was supposed to record and record all of the results for all 1,600 precincts in Iowa. So somebody make this make sense for me. A candidate in a race 
is funding him and his political donors are funding the very app that is supposed to be recording the results of this race and nobody thinks there's anything wrong with that and and by the way the dnc was also in on it too and they were funding it too so they had to know that pete Buttigieg, a candidate in their race was funding this app and what do you know the day of the iowa caucuses the app doesn't work and the person who gains the most from that is pete Buttigieg. So you can call it conspiratorial. You can say that's outlandish thinking. Call it what you want. But here's the thing. There are too many coincidences here. The Des Moines Register poll just mysteriously not being published because some anonymous person called Pete Buttigieg's campaign and complained to them about something, some inaccuracies and and inconsistencies in the polling. Poll the poll, even though it makes absolutely no sense. Then after that, the, the app that's meant to be reporting the results of the, the caucus mysteriously doesn't work. And of course, Pete Buttigieg and his donors are, are, are funding the, the app. So what are we supposed to think? It is the same DNC. And again, the DNC knew about this the entire time. They knew Pete Buttigieg was funding this app and all the conflicts of interest that that entails. So we're talking about the same DNC that in the very last primary election cycle got caught red handed in broad daylight, rigging the the primary against Bernie Sanders, who is also in this very same primary right now. And then all of this, this trickery and funny business is happening behind the scenes. And what we're supposed to just not think there's, there's anything shady going on here. We're supposed to just take the DNC and Pete Buttigieg at their word and and, and believe that there's nothing going on here. That is incredibly silly. That would be dumb as all hell. This is a scandal. This is a scandal. This should end Pete Buttigieg's campaign if the mainstream media wants to pretend like they're doing their job at least 10%. This should be national headlines tomorrow because I don't care if you're a Bernie Sanders supporter or not. This does not add up, and this looks bad at face value. The optics of this is just bad. So heads need to roll at the DNC. There's no, there's no other uh, uh, way around this because there's no, there's no other way they can ameliorate the situation. Because Bernie Sanders, even though he's likely going to win, I, and if he doesn't win, that's a whole other uh, uh, can of worms. But even though he's likely still going to win the Iowa caucuses. The delegates aren't what matter. Iowa only makes up 1% of the the total delegate count in the country. So the delegates aren't what matter. It's the momentum you gain from it. And that is all gone, been shot to hell because of this debacle that has gone on tonight. And because Bernie Sanders did not get to give a victory speech in Iowa. He did not get to do a victory lap and and shit on the mainstream media and the, the, the... political establishment and the democratic uh, leadership who has been actively trying to undermine him and pretend like he doesn't actually have a shot at winning the nomination. He didn't get to give that, do that victory lap tonight. More than that, all the other losers in Iowa got to go come out and give these semi victory speeches. And Joe Biden, who is uh, Bernie Sanders biggest rival in this entire primary, didn't have to fully embrace the, major loss that his campaign, the big ass L that he took tonight, because anybody who was watching those videos of the what was happening in those Iowa caucuses, it was sad for Joe Biden. Like I said, the, I mean, there were so many precincts that I was watching and then I was following on Twitter where he wasn't even viable. We're talking about the last vice president of the United States, vice president of an incredibly, a still incredibly popular president. I believe Barack Obama's approval rating is about 60%. And have raising all this money, has all this praise from the media, and he's considered this inevitable front runner, the most electable candidate, and he's the best chance to beat Donald Trump. Well, he can't even get enough people to show up in precincts to become viable. He it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. There were some times where it was um uh, there would be like a precinct where there's like 80, 90 Bernie Sanders supporters and like 60 Elizabeth Warren supporters and 30 Pete Buttigieg supporters. Joe Biden got like 10 people out there. Joe Biden got like five people out there. That is fucking embarrassing. And Joe Biden did not have to own up to that tonight. He did not have to come out and give a speech and address how 
bad, how epic of a failure his Iowa campaign was. Now he gets to go on like everybody else. It's a wash. It's a wash, everybody. Let's pack up shop and go to New Hampshire. And let's just act like this whole Iowa thing didn't happen. So this was one of the worst case scenarios that could have happened for Bernie Sanders. And like I said, heads need to roll at the DNC. Tom Perez needs to be gone. He needs to be gone. Um, Pete Buttigieg, like I said, if there was, if the mainstream media was wants to pretend to do their job, they would pressure him to drop out immediately because this is this is scandalous. This is scandalous on so many levels. And the Bernie Sanders, this is a test for Bernie Sanders, and it's a test for all his supporters because. We already know that they're gonna do. They're gonna pull out all the stops, every dirty trick in the book. We already saw what they did in 2016: the collusion between the media and and the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC, and how the DNC and, the, and Hillary Clinton had a fundraising agreement where they would basically bankroll the bankrupt DNC for the entire primary and the general election. And in return, the Hillary Clinton campaign literally got to decide on the staff of the DNC. They got to pick and choose the staff of the DNC. And they also had final say on all communications that came out of the DNC because they were fundraising, because they were bankrolling the DNC during the 2016 primary. We know they were doing all of that and all the other shady shit that they, that they had going on back in 2016. And now Bernie Sanders hasn't even better chance of winning the, the Democratic nomination. And like I said, they're going to pull out all the stops, every dirty trick in the book they're going to do to stop Bernie Sanders. And this Iowa caucus, perfect example. So like I said, this is a test for Bernie Sanders because what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? Are you going to still take the high road and, and pretend like you're above the fray and not say anything while they cheat you in broad daylight again, again? And this isn't the first time in this primary season either. There's been a bunch of underhanded tricks from the DNC and the media and these different polling organizations when it comes to Bernie Sanders. And he, again, he's let all of it slide up until now. But this is a whole other level of brazen. This is bordered, this is bordering. This is on some like third world um, banana republic, complete sham of, of, of a democracy type shit that this is. That's what this is. And if Bernie's going to sit that and have and tell his volunteers to just keep it pushing and act like nothing happening, that's a whole that's going to be another problem. That's a whole other can of worms, because I don't think that anybody's that's going to work for anybody. That isn't going to work for anybody. And it's getting to the point where this is problematic because Bernie Sanders has millions of people across this country donating millions of dollars to his campaign, uh, um, volunteering countless hours of their time to get this man elected, doing everything in their power to get this man elected and, and to bring about this political revolution. And if Bernie Sanders is going to sit there and get cheated at every turn and not say a goddamn word about it, then what's the point? You're wasting all these people's time. You're wasting all these people's money because you're giving them the green light to keep doing this. You need to raise hell. You need to be doing press conferences about this. You you could even make uh, uh, bring a lawsuit against the DNC and Pete Buttigieg for this sham that they were trying to run in the Iowa caucuses. This is still early. I don't know how they exactly how they're going to respond. the The campaign has um, so apparently Bernie Sanders was preparing for some type of bullshit like this to go down. So Bernie Sanders had his own. Um, precinct cap captains uh monitoring the caucuses and the results and reporting them on their own separate app and so apparently some people from bernie sanders campaign have released some of the data but it's only 40 percent of the precincts and bernie sanders is up by pete on pete buddha judge by like four points or something like that so that it appears like that's the pushback that they're going to have and if that's if that's where they leave it that is weak sauce that is weak sauce Somebody needs to call out Pete Buttigieg and ask the question directly. What did you pay twenty one thousand dollars to this company that was bu- that uh, uh, built this app to to res- to report results? Why did you? Why are you the only candidate paying money into that that app? Furthermore, why are all your donors paying money into that app? And why is the DNC 
green lighting all of this because they also paid for it. So they, I know damn well they knew Pete, Pete Buttigieg and all his donors were, on the, were also paying for this app too. So, Bernie, if you got some fight in you, let it show. Let it show because this is a test run. They want to see how much shit they could get away with. And if they can just literally have a candidate finance the, the app that is supposed to be reporting all of the election results for an entire state... And then not only is it did we did, did, it's not like we found about out about this months and months later after the Iowa caucuses went off without a hitch and Bernie Sanders wins. No, unprecedented chaos in Iowa. And it's all comes back to this app. So, again, like I said, this is a test run. If they can see that they could get away with this, they it's a green light to pull out all the stops. So you're up big. In, you were up big in Iowa. You're up even bigger in New Hampshire and you're up big in California. What's stopping them from doing this and many other things to, to, to stop Bernie Sanders? Nothing. So that's why he needs to make a point of this and he needs to make an example of Pete Buttigieg and tear his ass up over this.